the glass box. It's all about perspective. This is brought to you by the CAD Academy. The CAD Academy is a STEM-based engineering and architectural program for secondary and post-secondary education. I am your host today. I am Stephanie Kwame. I have 24 years of technology ex uh, education experience and it's my pleasure to be with you today. M.C. Escher passed away around in 1972 and he was a mathematical genius who married graphical image with math concepts. You might want to look up his work. He was fascinated with the paradox and the impossible. This is a, a hatch pattern from a very popular CAD package and if you look at it closely you'll discover it's impossible to build. Notice this pattern over here. That pattern is repeated in this picture of the geese. So he had all kinds of unusual things he did. This is called convex and concave. But among his favorite, uh, his uh, greatest admirers were mathematicians who recognized his work and extraordinary visualization of mathematical principles. And in a way, CAD drawings are the same way. It's a marriage of um, math and graphics. We have someone at work that brought an Adul's guide that have belonged to his father and belonged to his grandfather from 1923. It was a high school book that was in technology education. I looked at it and it has a wealth of information in it and I was very, very surprised at it. Uh, the very beginning it says, when we build, let us think that we build forever. Let it be such work as our descendants will thank us and say, see, this our father did for us. So it uh, brought on a pride in workmanship. This is the Capitol building of uh, in Washington DC when it was first built and there was a contest. William Thornton won and he wasn't even an architect. He just he loved architecture but he was a doctor and he came up with the design and, and that was chosen for our Capitol. But of course the Capitol building is beautiful and still stands today a work of art. The church to the right, it was built in 1623. It still stands as well. So it's not something that's well built with a, you know, uh, with people that know what they're doing uh, will stand as a tribute forever. This is a camera from 1893 and it's still around. You can buy it on the internet. And this is a tractor, a John Deere tractor from 1917. If you were taking the course in 1923, you would start off lear learning uh, geometry, trigonometry, surveying, and surveying, and it would be all in reference to producing and making things. So it would make sense uh, with, uh, and this is like for instance here, you would figure out the equation to figure out uh, if this would be able to be made and not fail, that cantilevered uh, overhang there. And they also did strength of materials back then. They did how to read plans and how to make plans. They did talked about architectural drawing and the one I was uh, looking at, it talked about AIA specifications, American Institute of Architects, and even talked about estimating. So I thought, boy, this is a very comprehensive book. And it did include the glass box, but it wasn't called the glass box back then. The uh, technical drawings, uh, are a form of visual communication. And the glass box concept was made so that we could show every side of a 3D object. And so they call that multiple view or orthographic projection. And um, a view of a drawing is called a projection. So a front view is, a pr is called a front projection. And so we'll go learn a little bit more about that. In order to show a 3D object on a 2D piece of paper, it is necessary to unfold that because it's like a pattern. And people actually make patterns out of uh, their CAD drawings as well. Uh, and uh, to place all planes flat in one plane. So you can see if you count, there's six possible views you could make in, um, on, from the glass box. Now the idea was that you would come off of your 3D object and if you extend a line in this direction in key areas you're able to reproduce this drawing and that would be the front plane. Then if you wanted a top view 
then you draw lines up this way, important lines, and draw, and then you have a top, and the same with the side views. And so perpendicular lines, that's what we're talking about, those little lines I was showing you, are drawn from all points of the edges or contours of the object to the plane of projection. So in other words, this is the plane of projection, this is the object, I'm going to draw from that plane, and that would then be the uh, profile or right plane doesn't seem that difficult, does it? Is it always necessary to have six views? And the answer is no. You want to have the least amount of information on your drawing uh, that still uh, lets people know clearly what this part drawing building is about uh, that you can to explain it clearly. So for instance, this still plate would only need two because it has x, y, and a height and so the least number of views or the least number of information <coughs> that you can give on a drawing or the least cluttered is the better off, the better off we are. Projective views allow us to see the in external uh, features and the actually the views of something inside. So what we're going to do is project a view here. <coughs> so how we would do that is literally slice through these, the object and then we, it would show with uh, industry standing hatching, etc., what that looks like on the inside. So that's another view we could have. <coughs> we could also have a sectional view, and this provides a clear and understandable view of an interior of an object. So it's very much like the other view. So again, we slice here. We say we're looking that way and come up with uh, the interior part. There's also auxiliary views, and sometimes a part isn't just X, Y, and Z, but it goes off at an angle, and it's, it's very difficult to make that clear to the person that would be reading the drawing. And so sometimes you need to have something that goes in a direction that is inclined or oblique and is neither parallel or perpendicular, and those would be called an auxiliary view. A detail view allows us to take a feature of interest and enlarge it so we can take a look at how it, what it's like. In um, architecture, you might be looking at the uh, a foundation detail. And so basically, that's what a detail view is about. A broken out section view is an exposed feature of interest, and you don't have to create a new view to show it. So you can see here, this is showing a hole in this uh, object, and um, that way they can show that without, um, without making an additional view. So basically, <coughs> cropped is reducing the size of a view, and uh, partial views, uh, you, you don't show the entire drawing, so there's others. There's cropped and partial views as well. Drawing standards have been figured out by the American Institute of Architecture for Architects, and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers for engineering. And it's a wonderful thing because then you have consistent uses, you have consistent naming and uh, sizes, convention, everything is the same. So they have the information about how a sheet is formatted, they have all the dimension rules, and they have the line type rules, like for hidden lines. And um, so I always say that if you're, the sign of intelligence is not that you have it up in your head all the time, but you know where to look it up. So make sure that you know where you can find information about the rules. Sheet sizes come in ISO or international standards. Uh, we uh, spoke at one time how we are on um, imperial units and the rest of the world is on metric. And we also have our own sheet sizes. So this is the American National Standards uh, inst uh, National Standard of Institute sizes. And so you can see that an A sheet is, if you take an A sheet and double it, you've got a B. If you take a B sheet and double it, you've got a C. If you take a, a C and double it, you've got a D. That's basically what it is. Architecture has a different size for D than engineering does. They have a 24 by 36. So that's uh, different in architecture. Sheet formats require that notes be in all capitals. So you can see the notes up at the top of that sheet are all capitalized. And with the revisions, that is all capitalized as well. 
the title block everything is capitalized but uh, you can have a little leeway with the customers uh, title block area where they put their name their logo and personalize it here's some examples of multiple multi-view drawings and if you think that we are the ones that created it we're the smartest we got SolidWorks a parametric feature based solid modeler we've got a BIM modeler in ARCHICAD but no this was actually uh, Wright Brothers airplane here on the right they uh, the one that uh, they experiment experimented with and they finally flew and you can see that they've got a plan view and they've got a side view and then they've got a uh, like an orthographic view so they worked with multiple views uh, drawings back then as well this is very simplized on um, architecture and architecture really doesn't go with the side the front they call them elevations so their annotation is different on a set of drawings they would start with the site plan then do a foundation plan but it's very the views are would be the same as that glass box theory so to wrap this up <clears throat> the glass box it helps us in visualizing and making multiple view drawings and we do that to convert a 3D drawing to a 2D piece of paper. <clears throat> so again, multi-view multi drawings are a visual form of communication. They are used to clearly define a 3D object on a 2 sheet, 2D sheet of paper. There are six possible views from that glass box theory. And uh, views are produced by, uh, by projecting from the object onto the projected plane. We talked about drawing the lines. and the best thing to do on a drawing is make it as simple as you can and yet still communicate what this is what the design is about so the least use the least uh, information you can to communicate the design and the American Institute of Architecture and the uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers are organizations that supply the industry standards and so we need to be aware of them and use them when we do our drawings so that's it for today. Thanks for listening.